Hey guys, Mr. Lego Ed here, and this is my Gravekeeper deck for October 2013. So yes guys, this is my Gravekeeper deck. Now, I haven't been back for that long, obviously, uh, and Gravekeepers are actually the deck I left this channel with as my um, kind of deck of the week, as I was doing back then. Um, but I've got to say, Gravekeepers are my favourite deck of Yu-Gi-Oh, really. Um, they're Spellcasters, which is my favourite type. They're one of the oldest archetypes around, if not the oldest archetype. And they're just so much fun and consistently do alright and cons consistently, should I say, kind of keep your game up and kind of give you challenges with every deck that you're faced with, but can also give you solutions for every challenge. Now, I didn't explain that very well, but let's go straight into the deck list. So the deck list is Blackwing Zephyros the Elite, 3 Gravekeeper's Commandant, 3 Gravekeeper's Descendant, 3 Gravekeeper's Spy, 3 Gravekeeper's Recruiter, 2 Gravekeeper's Assailant, 2 Malefic Cyber End Dragon, 1 Dark Hole, 1 Royal Tribute, 1 Book of the Moon, or should I say Book of Moon, 2 Gravekeeper's Stell or Steel, I never know how to pronounce it correctly, 3 Mystical Space Typhoon, 3 Necro Valley or Necro Valley, 2 Pot of Duality, 1 Allure of Darkness, 2 Mirror Force, 2 Dimensional Prison, 1 Torrential Tribute, 1 Compul Compulsory Evacuation Device, 1 Solemn Warning, 2 Fiendish Chain, and that's the main deck. Extra deck is 2 Cyber End Dragon, 1 Vylon De Sigma, 2 Gargargar -gar -gar Cowboy, 2 Number 66 Master Key Beetle, 1 Gem Knight Pearl, 1 Utopia, 1 Photon Papular... I can Pappy, I can never pronounce it right. Uh, one Core Black Shiver Corn, one Wind Up Zen Meister, one Roach, uh, one Maestroke, and one Zen Mains. And the side deck is two Effect Failure, two Electric Virus, two Night Beam, two Deck Devastation Virus, two Mind Crush, one Soul Drain, two Divine Wrath, and two Debunk. Now, first things first, I wouldn't really look at the extra or the side deck as what this deck is mainly about because I am kind of getting back into the game and I haven't got complete understanding of what I need to put into both to make this deck perfect. I would say the extra deck is pretty close to being what I, well, at the moment is probably what I choose to put in an extra deck. Um, I, you could probably switch around from Pearl to Zen Mains any of these cards to your personal preference, um, but Key Beetle, Gaga Gar Cowboy, and Violon de Sigma, and obviously the Cyber Ends, I would keep in the extra deck. You could lower them to one, but the extra deck can be played around with because this is Gravekeepers. They they don't need to use their extra deck, but it comes in handy. It's it's an extra resource they can use, but it's not like the main purpose of the deck to bring out any of these cards. Um, the side deck also you can play around with as long as it works with the deck and you know that you'll be able to draw into it and use it well with the deck or it's a single card that can just be used against the deck you're against then I yeah add it in no matter what you can do whatever. I know Electric Virus is quite big in the side deck at the moment due to Dragunity Dragons. Uh, and I know that Debunk and Divine Wrath are really useful cards and Deck Devastation Virus is really useful in this deck as you're playing darks that can go up to 2000 or more attack. So let's go into the deck though. Really it's quite simple to explain. If you're playing Gravekeeper's deck you're going to be playing 3 Commandant, 3 Descendant, 3 Spy, 3 Recruiter. You can play 2 Commandant and really you could play 2 to 3 of any of these cards in a Gravekeeper deck. I probably would always play 3 Spy and 3 Recruiter, but it's your own personal preference as a Gravekeeper player. Um, but yeah, you're pretty much always going to be playing 3 or 2 of each one of these cards. It's just the basic Gravekeeper engine. You're also always going to be playing 3 Necro Valley, and pretty much you're always going to be playing 2 Stell, um, or, well, 1 you can play, but you're usually going to be playing 2, and you're pretty much always going to be playing Tribute. Um, the tech cards I have chosen and the reasons I'll go into now. Um, Zephros I've chosen mainly for XYZ. He's also a great card to bring 
your Nico Valley back to your hand. And it'll be like, why would you want to bring it back to your hand? It's your power card. It, it's your one that boosts their attack. It stops your opponent, etc., etc., etc. But a lot of these cards that can be used against your opponent, you actually use on yourself a lot. For instance, Book of Moon, you'll be using on your spy more more than really on your opponent. It can be used on your opponent, obviously. But you're probably going to be able to use it on your spy a lot more. Also, um, your Malefic Cyber End Dragon, should I say. Once it's on the field, you can't use any of these cards to attack. And Grave Keepers can spawn. You can have a turn of ritually. You literally spawn loads, you might have a spy set, you flip it, you get a recruiter, then you normal summon a descendant, stuff like that. Or you have two spy sets, stuff, yeah, you, you can spawn pretty quickly um, once you have the spy set and stuff like that. So you might want to get rid of your Cyber End Dragon just to go for some different plays maybe, or some XYZ plays. Um, and then having Zephyros in the grave means you can pop your card, your Necro Valley back to your hand. It will kill your Cyber End, but it means you can attack with your other cards. And other stuff like that, it's just useful to bring it back to your hand. But you can also bring stuff like Spy back to your hand, um, and then play it set again. Um, but it's just any of these monsters you can find useful. Like you might summon a Commandant to go for that 2100 attack, just beat down, then bring it back to your hand, and then search for a Necro Valley with Zephyros. Obviously you only play it at one because it can only be used if its effect can only be used once, but it's a, just a great tech card for this deck, I think. Over Gale, which some people use for tuning. Um, I find that the XYZ format's a, um, a lot better than the Synchro kind of uh, deck version. Now I also play two Assailant. I was playing um, Gravekeeper Guard, which is the one where you can it's 1900 defense, you flip it face up and then it uh, bounces a card back to your opponent's hand. Now, it's a really useful card, and I'm considering putting it in the side deck, um, because a lot of people usually think a set card in a Gravekeeper's deck is Spy instantly, and then they find out it's a guard, and they're like, oh, damn it, because then you flip their card back to their hand and stuff. But two assailants working really nice. Its effect to switch battle positions of your opponent's monsters is really useful, like more than you'd think. A lot of cards released these days are having very, very like di big differences between I find their attack and defense, or big enough differences. Um, they're never usually really close. So assailant's power being able to switch really is quite useful, especially as you can have you can have a more powerful card like Commandant on the field, and and it has that 2100, so you can get over like 20, uh, 2000 attack point monsters and stuff, even though they're actually there's not many, but. Um, yeah, it's just a really useful effect, and two's working out quite nicely. Um, also, you can use it as a spare allure of darkness because a lot of people just play one, so you can use it as a like card just to use as kind of a spare to, on to, like drop out now and then, like if they force you just to discard, like or you have to discard for, like divine wrath and stuff, or even deck devastation. It's really useful just for that kind of thing. There's a spare kind of card to waste. I say waste, but use correctly, obviously. Um, I also use two Malefic Cyber End Dragons. These are just the powerhouse of the deck. Really, the problem with Gravekeepers is, is sometimes you're not very strong, and especially with these huge monsters coming at the moment, um, with like uh, Dragoonity Dragons, I find that a Cyber End Dragon really can like change the tide. Uh, a lot of people do play Stardust um, to protect your Necro Valley, but I prefer the big 4,000 attack. Really, you're going to be able to protect your Necro Valley well enough. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry. Now, obviously, you play the staple of Dark Hole and stuff like that, and Book of Moon. Um, Pot of Duality is there for consistency. Um, I didn't usually play this, but I've recently started playing this, and it's really working out. You can, you just use it basically once you have, when you have little, because you do play a large spell and trap lineup. Um, mainly, you play a huge back row lineup of two Mirror Force, two Prison, and Torrential Compulse. Solemn and Fiendish Chain, that's a very large back, uh, back row, and you need it, but obviously you draw into it a lot and you want your monsters to do your plays and stuff like that, so Duality is just there for consistency. I also play the Triple MST, and I recently started playing Triple MST in all, um, the decks I'm trying to create for you guys. I really think Triple's the way forward, if not Triple 2. Um, it's just with the lack of Heavy Storm, people are going for the really heavy back row. I am, I'm, why I'm going so back row heavy, I know there's going to be no Heavy Storm. And not a lot of people play Malevolent Catastrophe. So using those MSTs to your advantage, especially as you try and get those car key cards that are going to pop your Necro Valley, like the Spells and Traps, but also the back row that can hurt you. 
Um, I'll, I've seen other people playing Dark Bribe in their decks recently as well, um, which could work as well. A lot of the cards in a Gravekeeper deck you can interchange, and this is just my version currently of it. Um, but I really am enjoying Gravekeepers, and it's one of my favourite archetypes. Um, I really recommend trying out Gravekeepers, especially if you're a beginner, because the plays are actually quite simple. They're hard to master and when to use them, but they are pretty simple. The effects on each card are very simple to know. Um, they're not like timing, it's not that is an issue really with Gravekeepers, um, like having to know that those rulings and stuff. And they're just a really fun deck to, to play and a really consistent winning deck. Like, you do lose now and then, but you mainly... W I feel like Gravekeepers can consistently win against uh, Tier 2 decks and lower, and do it very well. Tier 1, we do have issues, and you have to kind of know what you're playing against and how to side properly. Really, your side deck's what's going to come into play against the top one tier decks. But I am finding that, uh, yeah, Gravekeepers are a lot of fun. But uh, yeah guys, comment below with your thoughts on the deck, um, your thoughts on Gravekeepers, your, your thoughts on maybe cards to take out and put in and stuff, like there's a lot of tech cards in Gravekeepers that a lot of people play, um, like you could interchange the back row to your own personal preference, uh, like MSTs and Allures you could change, uh, you can even change like the Cyber Ends and like Zephros and stuff to your own kind of play f how you play. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a really nice deck to pick up and a really nice deck to play. So, um, tell me your thoughts on Gravekeepers. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, video uh, over, like, talking about the deck and stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these, obviously, and I uh, hope you guys really enjoy this. So, I uh, hope to see you around, guys, and uh, cheers!